This is Richard Solomon and the famous Rick Frischman. Let me tell you, when you go to Wikipedia, the Oxford English Dictionary, uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica, and you see the word publicity or publishing, there's a picture of Rick Frischman usually smiling. <laughs> Only when I'm with you, kiddo. Only when I'm with you. And uh, so every year we do a roundup of BEA because you've done how many BEAs now? Oh my goodness, this is number... Like 28? No, 30-something. Wow. My first one was in 1977. Oh, wow. That so, Was it actually called BEA back then? Or it was, was it then called, called ABA, American okay. Booksellers Association. So, uh, uh, so, and I maybe missed, you know, two along the way. Probably because your kids were being born yeah, or something. Some yeah, some crazy yeah. stuff like that, exactly. Yeah. You know, so for everyone who listens to this broadcast... All the time. I, I've known Richard since he was a little boy, it seems like. and With the slingshot. <laughs> with the, and all of you now have heard his laugh over and over and over again. And for years and years and years, I have been searching my brain, trying to figure out where I have heard this laugh before. And I think I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for, I, will, I will... For those of you who have not heard him or, or remembered this, I'm going to re- try to refresh your memory because it drove me nuts for years. The laugh track on, on MASH. <laughs> no, no. no, believe it or not. Okay. Um, this sh- there was a movie with Jessica Beals called Flashdance. I remember Flashdance, sure. Remember that what movie? a feeling. <laughs> that, that's her, okay. And her best friend at the club... Right. Was in an alligator suit. Remember that? That sounds like me. <laughs> and he had a laugh that's exactly like yours. I got to get... You now, must get this, and now we got to put it on so, the radio So, no, show. what we'll do is this. At this point, I'll splice the tape. That's right. <laughs> I'll get the thing off of YouTube. <laughs> get, that's right. And get it. And, and I'll have Chris Maffei, who's our editor. I'm telling you, it's the stick same it. laugh, the guy... Now, I don't know his name. But you alligator can find dude. that out. But the alligator <laughs> dude in Flashman, that movie is probably 1984 or something like that. I don't you know. That I'll get out of the library and I'll I'll watch it with the with the, the, the you know this you know microphone system right right in front of the thing and I'll wait for the scene and exactly. then we could do a comparison it's throughout the whole movie. So and and every time I hear your laugh, it's like where did Alli- I hear alligator that dude? <laughs> the alligator dude. So that from here on. Today forward, that's who you are. So, Alligator dude. But here we are in BEA, and uh, we've done, I don't know how many of these together now. But, oh, uh, like 14 or 15. Or many. Yeah, 14 or 15, something like that. And it is changing, and uh, and we may not be there to next year. It's going that's to right. Chicago. That's right. This may be like the year before the bye. Yeah, and, <laughs> I, and I don't know when it's coming back to New York, but uh, it has changed, and yet again, it's smaller. Uh, it's consolidated. You know, I see, you know, Penguin Random House now has one booth together. Miss Penguin bought Random House from Bertelsmann, I guess. That's okay. who is that. And, you know, there are a few biggies and then a lot of little and a lot of foreign stuff. But it's decidedly, I mean, here we're sitting here on the middle day, which should be the... The big day. The big day at right, what, at 2, 3 in the afternoon. I don't know what time it is. Somewhere around there. Um, this... Would be what time is it? Three thirteen. Okay, yeah. should be. You would think the the halls would be brimming and crazy, and it's very well, the post lunch nap is kicking yeah, in. in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but I, I hear what you're saying. Now, what's interesting is yesterday, which was day one, they did not start to one o'clock. What was that all about? Why why wouldn't they start the show at nine a.m. or nine thirty? I know. Weird. In fact, that. There's a, uh, a publisher's show daily, and in it, it's on the front page, that weird is what oh, it says, says yeah. that it started at 1 in the afternoon. It's like, why didn't you start at 9 and have, like, three full days? I mean, most people thought that if you're going to do two and a half days, I mean, do all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, and a half a day Friday. So people, you know, leave and go home for the weekend, but not half a day Wednesday and all day Thursday and Friday. And I'm interested in seeing what it'll be like here tomorrow, on a Friday. Uh, in the summer? In the summer. Post-Memorial Day? I yeah. would think a lot of people are like, I'm, I'm not coming. You know, look, like, if, if I wasn't so dedicated to doing the show, I, you know, it was tough to come here because I had a lot of court we appearances. In court, yeah. What was interesting is I, yesterday I got here in the morning, <laughs> got my press pass, and then 
what happened was I found out that the show was not starting till one o'clock, and I and I was like, well, that mm. doesn't help me. I had to leave at twelve to go to Mineola for a two o'clock deposition, and of course. That didn't prevent me from getting access. <laughs> I'll just and it. you still got like that. Well, right. you are the amazing Richard Solomon. <laughs> but then I had court this morning in Brooklyn, and I didn't get here this afternoon. And tomorrow I got court in Brooklyn again, and I couldn't get any of these things adjourned. But I can really see how if people have something thrown in the way of coming here, you have to really do a lot to get here. It's not the easiest place to get to. The mass transit's not perfect. I, I usually just walk back and forth from Penn Station. Um, but... I, I'm sure if there was tumultuous rain, it'd probably deter a lot of people. I don't know, the, like the Friday thing that you said. And, you and know, then they have this book con thing or whatever. I have the pass for that. Yeah, it's uh, right here. And that's on... Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, which in theory is for the general public. Then, I then don't what, know. Who, who are these the people? <laughs> yeah, where is it? I don't know. Is it here? And it oh, just it's here. continues, so... That's uh, Saturday. 10 to 5 Saturday, 10 to 6, 10 to 4 on Sunday. Yeah. And it doesn't say much on the press pass. Yeah. Get it. So it's book kind of press, da 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 uh, I don't understand. I mean, I, I, I guess it's for the everybody, but... Uh, I guess it's more pop culture but I, I guess this is more for the industry and that's more for the consumer, but... Yeah. I, I guess that's why they figured the consumers will come on the weekend. But we will, well, they'll they'll print all this information later, and we'll we'll hear how many came to this and how many came to BookCon, and you know, I uh, what can I tell you? So, well, well, tell me, are we attending the real to real a track tape and vinyl record convention? You know, we've talked about it every year. I, I believe, I think there's always going to be books. I think there's always going to be, you know, books that people want to hold in their hand. However, it's, there's a consolidation. Uh, the general author, you know, has more power. They don't need to go to Simon & Schuster, HarperCollins to get published anymore. They can go to Create Space. You know, and we're sitting in Ingram here. They have Lightning Source. There's, PO, there's so many POD publishers, but it... For the consumer, people listening to this show, you got to understand the the logistics and what the reality is, and because there's a lot of bad people out there taking advantage of authors, um, and that's why I write books about publishing and trying to teach people the right and the wrong. But uh, I do believe that you know more and more ebooks are getting read. You know, years ago they said, "Oh, publishing is going to die. Ebooks are coming in," and nothing happened. Now people are downloading books on their Kindle, on their Kobo, on their yeah. cell phone. I mean, it's hard to read a book on your cell phone. Yeah, but, but on your it. iPad, you know. Although now people got i, you know, iPhone six pluses. It's so big well, as an at, iPad. Look at this thing. This is, is a that's Samsung. Your, yeah, it's a Samsung. You could read a book on and that. And the truth is, you know what? It's actually look at that screen. That's it's big enough to really read something. Yeah, you could. I don't know that I'd want to read War and Peace on it, but you know what? It's good for the railroad. It's good for court. You know, in court, you're not allowed to really do much. So you sit in the back and you just try to, like, you know, read a little bit here and there. Sometimes you want to read documents that are downloaded to you about your own case. And you could read yeah. it there. So. Yeah, you know. And uh, so I think it is changing and people are, are, are downloading more. And uh, um, it's it's an ever-changing landscape, and, but I think it's good for the for the author. Um, our bookstores, I mean, you know, we say it every year. Is Barnes & Noble going to survive? I don't know. Yeah, look... You know, that you, you read in the media, are certain retail stores going to survive, you know? Some of the electronics stores, some of the book, you know, stores, you know, the whole bit. Hey, that's 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 Rich, Rick, Richard Solomon and Rick Frischman. There's and this is Terry Whalen. Terry Whalen. Oh, We're hello. on the radio. Hey, we're what's on up? The radio. On the radio. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so we're asking about uh, publishing and uh, are, are Barnes & Noble going to survive? Oh, yes. Why is that? Because they sell coffee? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, uh, honestly, I have no idea, but I hope so, because I like them. I like going to Barnes & Nobles. I like I looking at the books. Every now and then, I even buy one. See, that's the problem. It's sort of like a library with coffee, and that's... That, I, I don't but, know if you right, make... But here's that's the, a good the, business bottle when you have to but the pay so much taxes. You, you, you go for coffee, you go for the internet... And you go look at books, but the problem is this, is that 
they have some bestsellers, but it's hard to find a lot of the books you're looking for. They're just not stocking the books anymore. That's true. You know, they'll have it. If you're looking for a Bible, they got lots of Bibles. You know, but it's hard, and it's hard to compete with. You know, it's like I tell my authors, you know, trying to get bookstore coverage and, and, and space there. It's like competing with the Bible. It's like I don't like competing with God. You know, He's going to win most of the time. <laughs> you know, so unless you pay for the bookstore shelf space, which is co-op advertising, but that's even harder to do too. You, you can't even always sure. do that. Now, have, you, have you guys seen a? Seen the book Espresso Machines? Have you seen those? Things? Yes, that, we were that just was like in, in the in the yeah. basement at the University of Arizona in Tucson. They've got right. one, and you can you can walk up there with your little flash drive and go drink coffee and come back and they'll have a book for you. Wow, you know? Well, also, won't they? I mean, that's why we they have saw so, them they here. They have so many electronic versions, and they'll they'll tap into it and and print you one on the spot too if right. you want. Well, that's going to be, I was talking about it earlier today, I mean, it's in malls all over the world. We say, hey, I want the new John Grisham book. And it's like, okay, we'll look it up, and then we'll print it and come back in 15 minutes. Yeah. So that's what the new bookstore is, is these little espresso machines. You know, but, and but you let's, get an espresso coffee. Let's, let's project out for a second. They're pretty cool. But let's project out. <laughs> the, the, you know, the Tom Clancy's, this and that were established in the brick and mortar world. Right. So let's go 20 years now when the very established people are, you know, enjoying their wealth and not necessarily doing more than drinking pina coladas on the beach. And the nouveau crowd is really now coming in. Are you going to have millions of, you know, short selling authors as opposed to blockbuster people? Because of the way, because so, what I noticed about the internet is that, you know, the internet is like a million miles wide, but it's like three inches deep. Whereas in the old days, maybe you had, you know, some, you know, peaks. You know, is that going to be the reality in the future? I don't know. Uh, I was at the San Francisco Writers Conference earlier this year, and I heard uh, Penny Sansevieri, you know Penny, mm-hmm. and she was teaching a marketing class, and she said, remember everybody, there are 4,500 new books that come out every day. Wow. Every day. Wow. And yeah. so, and I... I, I didn't call her out during the class, but I went up to her afterwards. I said, gee, Penny, I said, that's a that's a pretty big number. I said, where'd you come up with that number? And she says, well, she's heard it from a lot of people, like at Bowker, for example, the guys that do the ISBNs. And um, it's probably true, you know? I mean, that's... A lot of, lot of, lot of stuff coming out all the time. So you, as an well, author, I have to figure think out that how, to, that, how to promote your book. That may even be that. low. I'll tell you why. Could be low. Okay, here is. <laughs> I mean, just in essence, I mean, think about this for a moment. I, a super Barnes and Noble store from has a hundred thousand books. Okay, eighty thousand of those books are backlist books, like Shakespeare and the Bible and. John Grisham and books been around, yeah, yeah, like that. So that leaves twenty thousand for new books a year. Okay, so um, that's not a lot of you know, right. And of course, they only have they don't keep just one copy of some. And books. Now yeah. Barnes and Noble doesn't even have room for twenty thousand because half the store is toys and puzzles and other stuff. So maybe it's ten thousand now. There were on average three hundred and seventy. Thousand to four hundred thousand regular books. Those are print books like we do every year. Okay, so that is over a thousand books a day. If you three hundred sixty-five days a year, okay, so that's over a thousand books that are real print books. Okay, that can actually get in a bookstore. So now let's talk about what about all the other print-on-demand books oh, yeah. that will never see a bookstore that are published every day, you know, and that av- the average book sells two or three copies in its lifetime. You know, I mean, Author Solutions, how many do they do? You said 50,000? 50,000. 50, okay. So, yeah, great space down the way there. They do 50,000 times. Well, there you go. So if you think of all of those... <laughs> That's a lot. I would say that 45,000 to 50,000 books a day is probably a pretty accurate 
number. But is it, 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 it 4,500 4, is what she said. 4,500. I mean, yeah, okay. 4,500 a, a, a day. No, I mean a day. So I said 1,000 a day of regular books and then all the other POD. I am bet you were at 4,500 to 5,000 books a day is That's probably. <laughs> but, it, but is it it's just a deplorification? Because, like, if you think about it, you know, <clears throat> there's now an app for everything. There, are, How many apps are there that you can get off of, like, you know, the, the Internet uh, cell phone store? that are all free. There's an app for like almost everything. And every radio, TV, every they have an app, every store has an app, you know? So there's like, it's like the same thing. It's like, it's like billions of apps, billions of books, but is it just short run? But short run, again, out of all those books, now remember, we said a thousand a day of real books you can get in a bookstore that are published by real publishers, let's say, okay? And then we have all the other ones, so it's like, all, now even the thousand books that are published by real publishers, most of those don't sell, just the reality. And then all the other Mishigas, which is Yiddish for... Um, craziness. Craziness, you know, that, that's like, you know, my mother's poetry, you know, from my Aunt Gloria or whatever, you know, which... Uh, Mishigas, yeah. That, that's going to sell, you know, to your mother. And in, we, we have a saying, it's not very nice, that the average POD, print-on-demand book, is bought by two people, two books or so. The author and his mother? <laughs> yeah, there, there's someone who either birthed you or married you. Right? <laughs> so, which is very mean, but uh, that's just the way it is. So, yeah, it's very, you know, there's a ton of them, but they don't sell them, but that's okay. Because well, you could use it as a tool. It's a tool, exactly. Right. So... You know, you know and so there's a little bit for everybody. People, you know, and that's why people have more power. They can get a book out. And then if indeed they do sell well, where someone comes to us and Morgan James say, look, I sold 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 books. But wow, you know, now we're interested because, you know, you sold more than the average 10 that everybody sells. Yeah. And you're building a platform and doing something. So, so in your Author 101 seminars, mm -hmm. are you seeing a different kind of author emerging? I think that, well, I mean, Terry, you're at everyone, and you're meeting authors. Uh, uh, I think we're getting some more sophisticated authors recently. What I, think do you think? I think they're trying to be... Um, I, th I think so. I, th I think the authors there are... Um, they're more savvy. They, they, they understand that they as an author have to do something to sell their books. I mean, that, that was my revelation I had at Author 101. What we called a mega book marketing university back then. In 2007, Rick brought me. I was an agent, and he brought me to meet with people, and I sat in all the meetings. And I sat there, and I thought, you know, I have been deluded here in this business because at that point in my life, I'd written like 50 books, and I had I altered traditional publishers, and I was counting on them to sell my books. And I'm like, I'm I'm deluded here, you know. I I, I I'm not doing anything to sell my bo own books. And so I I had a single website, TerryWhalen.com. That's all I had. And so I thought I'm going to do something different. I'm gonna I'm gonna do tele seminars. I'm gonna start a list. I'm gonna have an email list. So here here I am eight years later. I, I own like I think I own 50 domains. I have teleseminars out there. They're on replay that I've done. And to get in there, people have to give me their first name and their email address. I sell products online. Um, I have a blog that has 1,200 entries in it. Uh, I have 140. How many? I have 146,000 people follow me on Twitter. I have um, 4,800 Facebook friends. I have over and you know them all personally. <laughs> no. I have over 5,000 um, friends on Goodreads. And so, um, you know, and I work at this stuff. But, but I primarily work at Morgan James doing acquisitions. So I figure, hey, if I can do it, they can do it. Well, plus, he has a great new book. Well, a couple, but the one that just came out that's doing great. Uh, the Billy uh, Graham book. I Billy did. Graham, did you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. I wrote, a, I wrote a biography on Billy Graham. Wow. That came out in uh, November. There it is. How old is he now? 96. Oh, this book God came bless. out a couple of uh, days before Mr. Graham turned 96. I worked for him 20 years ago. I was uh, associate editor at Decision Magazine. 
back then we were doing 1.8 million copies of the magazine every month. I mean, they were pulling six or seven semis full of mail out of that place every day. Wow. It was unbelievable. But I, I got to, got, got my uh, updated book here, got it out, and um, completely brought some new stories in it. I've, uh, I've got about 35 reviews on Amazon. I've been, yeah, it's, it's hard for all of us. We've got to get the stuff so, out there. So isn't the bottom line that basically when you now write a book, you're really just entering into sort of a media enterprise project that's multifaceted? Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, we, I that, that's fair. the first step. I mean, that's the easy part, writing the book. Now you got to do something. You got to tell but, people about it. Isn't that almost like the, the what was it the movie called like uh, the president with Robert Redford, where he like wins the political race? He goes, "All right, well now what do I do? <laughs> well now what?" <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, this is Penny. Says we were just talking about. Oh, there her. you go. Oh, that's the woman that talked about the forty five hundred books. Yeah, and there she is. Maybe, yeah. we can, maybe we can you know check check the quote. Okay. So before we close out this segment. I understand I have to get some pickles. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's an inside joke. <laughs> that's going to be our next show, our pickle show. The pickle show. And, so, uh, and if you don't know what that is, uh, and you got to stay tuned, all I'm going to tell you is I gotta, I'm got. i told that i got to bring a jar of pickles or something right. like that. <laughs> stay tuned, and we will. Uh, it'll be a fun show. There you go. All right. All right. See you again from BA, but probably not next year. Yeah.